Technology in education has been heralded as a life-changing tool that helps students from all areas of the world and with a variety of learning methods and challenges rise to a higher level of literacy and technical ability. Technology offers many opportunities and also creates a number of challenges in education. A number of professors throughout the globe are deeply immersed in this technology and have identified a number of challenges that all educators can learn from. The 21st century is quite different than the 20th century in three ways. First, the economy and the workplace are changing dramatically as we move to a global, knowledge-based society. And many reports are now reflecting how complicated that change is. Second, the world is so complex now that no single person, no matter how smart they are, no matter how well educated they are, can fully understand wicked problems that we face, like lo global climate change. And so people need to learn to work in teams of complementary expertise. And third, most students will have multiple careers, and many of those careers don't yet exist. So how we prepare people for careers that don't yet exist, in terms of the flexibility, their ability to cope with uncertainty, their emotional ability to face a future that's very open-ended, these are all big educational challenges. So I think one of the challenges we have today is that there's a number of 21st century skills, they're called, uh, that we really need young people to be able to have to be prepared for the workplace of the future. And those are things like media literacy, critical thinking, problem solving. The fact that we live in a world now where 100 or 200 pieces of email or correspondence in a day isn't unheard of. In fact, it's, it's less than a lot of people get. So how can we prepare them to really be able to manage knowledge well and be effective and productive knowledge workers? So I think that's really the challenge we face is being able to construct those skills and tying them into all the kind of assignments and projects and, and, and learning that we're conducting in schools. So if we can build those 21st century skills in, we'll go a long way towards having our students prepared for an exciting and dynamic future. So very broadly speaking, how we interact with information has, has altered enormously and how we interact with each other has correspondingly altered enormously. And it's as a result of those two significant changes that I think educators need to be dealing with a different skill set. Uh, they need to be taking additional approaches to how they interact with their students. Now this is not to say that we need to replace necessarily what we're currently doing in education, but it does mean that we need to augment what's happening with regard to the development of these additional challenges. Uh, one lady at a recent conference came up to me and uh, after we were done talking about uh, the changed nature of texting and writing with students today. And she said, well, the way I see it, and, and that was a very apt point, she said, you know, I'm multilingual. I speak many different languages. Well, in order for me to learn French or to learn Spanish, I didn't have to abandon English or German. Uh, so it was the acquisition of a new skill. It was the notion of being multilingual that uh, contributed to her overall development. So I think in a classroom context, we're dealing with similar issues. You know, we still need core skills. We still need our students to, to uh, learn key content areas. They still need to, you know, learn what this bone in the body is called or what this particular formula in math or, or chemistry is called or what this particular type of, a, of an ingredient might be. So they still need to learn those things. But they need to become multilingual in the sense of what's happening in the world today. Teaching people how to learn rather than teaching them what they should learn. I think that the former will have a greater effect upon the latter than it is teaching them static information because today what is required to be successful in the modern world is students who can create knowledge, not students who can pare it back static information. And there is a substantial difference there. Statistics show the technology will continue to become more efficient and less expensive over the next several decades. This supports what we all have learned through Moore's Law, 
which originated around 1970 stating that processor speeds or overall processing power for computers will double every two years, while the overall cost of this technology will continue to become less expensive. Although the definite use of technology or the various instruments and methods that will accompany the technology and learning is unclear, one thing is certain. Technology will continue to proliferate in education in major ways. Talking to educators today, technology is something that is a blessing and a curse for many. Many appreciate the power of the technology, but also understand the responsibilities and continued learning required to use that technology efficiently. What do you think about the web too, like the blogs and wiki and... I think it's great. Is, it a, the challenge? Up with is it a challenge for you? No. Yeah. Not, not at all bringing that in. Did you think your students learn better from using 
some of the Web2 technologies? I think they do. I think they do. I'm having an interesting thought this summer. I've been spending the summer reevaluating some of my computer thoughts. I can't get my kids off the computers in class. My students were part of a Mac pilot program, mm -hmm. and so they are attached at the hip to their computers. And as an educator? I think it's great. There is a downside. <laughs> I can't get them off iChat. They think it's they think they're supposed to be communicating with and interacting with computers all the time, 24-7. They don't understand that there's actually a downtime <laughs> that that's supposed to exist. But as an edu as educators, we should. Do you think we should keep up with it, or force them to Absolutely. learn like we learned? No, actually, I just ordered a new computer this morning. So. Teachers know that to be able to use the technology in a way that complements their lesson plan, they must become and remain experts in the technology itself. What do you see as the challenges of, a, of faculty keeping up with this Web2 technology? It's extremely labor and time consuming. That it takes a lot of time to keep up with the, all the technology and schools have to invest in the time and the people to help support us and to help teach us and guide us. So actually today I went to Barnes & Noble's on the way down here and I bought a graphic comic book for my daughter because that's what I told her if she got through last night's homework I'd get her and blogs, wikis, and MySpace and more for the mother. <laughs> Good for you. So, those were the, that's where we're at these days. Because she's really okay on the computer. I have to more or less pry it out of her hands to go to sleep. It goes with her to the bathroom, but to sleep. Yeah. But that's how they learn. Right. So they're right. learning blogs, wikis, in my space. <laughs> Thanks. Facebook. Facebook is the one. Technology has come to the classroom like a wildfire in the past decade, and there are many challenges and opportunities that are associated with it. Teachers are embracing the technology, but are also aware of the limitations and stipulations required to use it in an effective manner. 